welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I'm so excited to have you here. If you are new to my channel, I'd love it if you'd take a moment, just hit the little subscribe button and the bell next to it. That way you're notified when new videos are uploaded. I have an entire calories versus points series that is on a playlist. So if you just look at the top of my YouTube page, you'll see the category for playlists. Click on that and you can watch all of the past videos where we've done a lot of deep dive digging into calories versus points and my big video about the shocking truth about points versus calories. I will do my best to link a lot of those videos down below for you guys as well. If you are excited about this video and you love the concept of calories versus points, give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you're checking out the description box so that you can head over to my website to get all of my delicious recipes as well as over to my Facebook group. We'd love to have you be part of our community over there. We are 16,000 strong and it is a very loving and supportive place to be. So all of that information as well as my discount codes and links to my favorite things can be found down in the description box. So without further ado, let's jump into whether or not you can lose weight on WW and stay within your calories. I started this points versus calories series. I started really digging into whether or not I was eating enough when I discovered Jordan Syatt. And I did mention Jordan in extensive detail in the shocking truth about points versus calories video. I found him, I literally binge watched all of his videos and it got me thinking about my own WW journey and whether or not I was consistently on a day-to-day -day basis eating enough calories to fuel my body and maintain my metabolism metabolism. As you know, if you follow my channel, I do jazzercise at least three times a week and it is a very intense workout. I burn a lot of calories and if I'm not fueling my body with enough calories on a given day, it's hard for me to make it through my workout and in the overall big scheme of things, I'm just damaging my metabolism and when I do lose the weight that I want to lose, it's going to be very, very hard for my body to adjust to eating more calories without gaining weight. So I thought after doing the Jordan Syatt, binge watching and a lot of other research that I wanted to essentially do a metabolism reset and start counting calories alongside my points. And boy, oh boy, my friends, it has been an eye opener. There are days that I am way below where I need to be calorie wise and above my points, but there are a lot of days that I nail it, that I'm right where I need to be calorie wise and I am right where I need to be points wise. And I'm here today to share with you how to do just that. You can stay within your points and eat enough calories. It's all about what foods you're choosing. So I want to share what I've learned as far as the foods that I'm choosing and how I can stay within my points and be within my calories. And that way, if you wanna just be on WW and you don't wanna double track calories, this is a great way for you to ensure that you're eating enough, but you're also following the WW program. And if you struggle with whether or not WW is the right program for you, maybe this will shed a little bit of light and maybe calorie counting is the best route for you to take. I'm going to share an example of a day, just the other day that I had where I nailed my points and calories. I'm gonna share with you what I ate that day so that it all kind of makes sense. So let's jump in. So the very first video that I did in this series, we did a deep dive into calories versus points. I did five traditional ways of following WW. As you know, on WW, we can eat whatever we want. We literally could eat Snickers all day long. If it fell within our smart points, we should still theoretically lose weight on WW. Now, of course, we wouldn't be fueling our body with the right nutrients, but technically, we're still following the program and we're within our points. So I took five different scenarios, five different ways of eating on WW, and we looked at points versus calories, and it was extremely eye-opening. There wasn't a single way of following the program that met both the calories and the smart points. We were always way over in our smart points and way under in our calories, no matter what approach we took to the program. If you haven't seen that video, please check that out. I'll link it down below. That will help this all kind of come full circle and and make a little bit more sense to you. Since that video, I've done a little bit of personal research and figuring out if it is possible to eat enough calories on WW. And after playing around with the foods that I'm eating every day and how I'm kind of laying those out for my meals and my snacks, it is, it is absolutely possible to eat enough calories. 
but it takes some strategic planning, a little bit of work around of the program, and honestly really focusing on those zero point foods. That is where you're going to get enough calories and stay within your smart points. Since I transitioned over to the clean approach to the program, so many of you have reached out to me and thanked me for my clean approach. You were finding that a lot of people that you knew, whether it was on YouTube or in real life, that were on WW ate a lot of processed foods, and that wasn't the route that you wanted to take. Now, there is nothing wrong with eating processed foods. If that's the route on your program that you wanna take, you need to do what works for you. But a lot of you said, I'd rather eat real whole food. I just don't know how to do it and stay within my smart points. So we kind of deep dove into how you can do that in several videos. We talked about easy swaps that you can make from processed foods to cleaner foods. Not always 100% clean. As you know, I follow the 90-10 rule. 90% of what I eat is clean real food and 10% is, you know, some of my favorite things that maybe don't fall in that clean foods list. Now, if you are someone that loves your processed foods and you like your potato chips and your protein bars and granola bars and cereal and wraps and all those things, then it is going to be a little bit harder for you to reach your caloric goal and your smart points. And let me tell you why. Those processed foods are generally not calorie dense, but they are high in smart points. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's take a look at a granola bar. So your traditional granola bar ranges in calories from about 120 to 150, but a granola bar is six to eight smart points. So if you eat a granola bar, you're only eating 120, 30, 40, 50 calories, but you're eating eight smart points, seven, six, which is a big chunk of your day if you only get the minimum number of smart points. And if you are eating foods that are low in calories and high in smart points throughout the day, you're really quickly going to reach your point target, but you're not going to reach your calorie target. You're going to be eating in the range of 800 to 1,000 calories a day, which isn't enough for anybody. Even if you are completely sedentary, you should eat substantially more than 800 to 1,000 calories. Also things like chips are generally not very calorie dense, but pretty high in smart points. Even your pop chips of the world or your poppables of the world, they're only 120 or 30 calories, but they're four or five smart points. So again, if you're choosing a granola bar for breakfast, you're choosing poppables as part of your lunch, and then maybe you're having a meal out for dinner, you're going to hit those points rather quickly, but you're going to be way under even a thousand calories a day. And that's where food choices on WW come into play. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some foods that are low calorie, but very high in smart points that are actually really good quality foods. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of things that I struggle with when it comes to WW. Actually, I'm going to give you three. One's a drink and two are food items. Number one is Cleo bars. Cleo bars are absolutely delicious. They are a Greek yogurt bar wrapped in chocolate. Now, do they have 100% clean ingredients? No, but they are an excellent, excellent choice when it comes to a sweet treat. They have a lot of protein. They have some prebiotics and probiotics because of the yogurt. They're small, they're individually packaged, so you don't tend to overeat. And again, with the good source of protein that's in a Cleo bar, it's a really good sweet treat option. Now they do have about 10 grams of sugar, which makes them six smart points and they are only 140 calories. So you're eating 140 calorie item and it's costing you six smart points. That's a lot of points for 140 calories. And if you're consistently eating those low calorie foods, but high points throughout the day, again, you're not going to reach your caloric goal. Next is a drink. We all know how good for you kombucha is. Again, it is full of prebiotics and probiotics. There is no added sugar in kombucha. The natural sugar is from the fermentation process of making the kombucha. A bottle is generally 50 to 60 calories, but is three smart points. And they aren't taking into account, they, meaning WW, the fact that there is no added sugar, but there is sugar in the fermentation process. So that sugar is essentially held against you when it comes to WW. They penalize you for sugar. Now I'm all for this because I think that eating a diet high in sugar isn't necessarily the healthiest for you, but things that are good for you that contain natural sugar, I think that there should be some differentiation between natural sugar and added sugar when it comes to smart points. But that's just me. 
I don't work for WW. They certainly don't care what my opinion is, but I just think that that is one of the pieces that I struggle with a little bit. It's hard for me to count three points for something that is 50 calories and is good for me. And the last example is actually a protein bar, a meal bar, and this is the healthy eating all the time and go bar or the heat bar. You guys know I love these. I love the company. The, the woman that owns the company is literally the sweetest thing. These are my go-to bars if I need something to sustain me for a long period of time on the go. These bars are perfection. When it comes to macros, perfection. When it comes to ingredients, there isn't a thing, single thing that should be changed on these bars. They range from about 200 to 210 calories. You're getting real whole ingredients. They are peanut butter based. There isn't a lot of added sugar to these. They have a good amount of protein and fiber. So overall, they're a very well-rounded, healthy option for a bar. But these bars are six to seven smart points. Now that's a little bit better considering they're around the 200 calorie point, but if you take the old way of thinking of WW and that's one point for every 50 calories, these bars should clock in more like the four point range, but instead they're six to seven smart points. If I'm choosing that for breakfast every day, I'm taking a big dent out of my points, but I'm only eating 200 calories. So this is where the core of the points versus calories comes in. There's two different ways that you can under eat essentially on WW. One is if you eat a lot of processed foods. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there are no good foods and bad foods. All foods are good. All foods lead to some nutritional benefit for us. All foods fuel our body as they should, whether they're processed or not. But if you are leaning towards a lot more packaged processed foods, you're going to hit that points goal long before you even come close to your calories. And on the flip side, if you're choosing a lot of really healthy options, full fat dairy, cream cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese, milk, you're choosing nut butters, almond butter, peanut butter, you're choosing quinoa. If you're not on the purple plan, quinoa has a lot of points. If you're choosing real whole food, you are also tending to hit that points threshold before you even come close to the calories. But I promise you there is a balance. There is a balance in being able to eat enough calories and stay within your smart points. So I want to show you guys an example of my tracker in the Lose It app. That is where I track my calories. And then I just double track in the WW app. So we're going to take a look at Sunday July 12th. So you can see in the morning for breakfast, I made my coffee with my collagen peptides and some chocolate mint layered super food creamer, as well as two tablespoons of dairy free half and half. So that is one smart point. So that's my first point of the day. And then you can see for breakfast that I chose to make a spin on avocado toast. I did sweet potato toasts. That is three points for three pieces. And just so you know, I am on the blue plan. It is actually three points on all plans because the sweet potato toasts do have a little bit of added olive oil and salt and pepper. So you do have to count for the oil. And then I had two eggs, which are zero points. I had 60 grams of avocado, which is also three points and three quarters of a cup of blueberries for zero. So you can see that for breakfast, including coffee, I had a total of seven smart points, 489 calories. For a morning snack this day, I decided to have kombucha. Now I did track the entire bottle, but I actually didn't end up finishing it. So it is a little less than 50 calories and I counted that as two smart points. So that put me at nine points for the day. Then for lunch this day, I decided to have an organic turkey burger from Applegate. These are three smart points. I had a hamburger bun, a great value, three smart point bun. So you can see that I'm still eating processed foods. I'm still eating packaged foods, but I'm having a heavy focus on zero point foods and healthy whole food. I also decided to have 150 grams, which is a little bit over half of a cup of whole milk, cottage cheese, a cup of watermelon. And on my burger, I topped it with seven grams of chosen foods, avocado mayo, and some sweet pickles for a total of 516 calories and nine smart points. So that puts me at 18 points for the day. And just so you know, I do get 34 points in a day. So, so far I'm at 18 points. For an afternoon snack this day, I decided to make a protein shake. If you didn't know, I also have a protein goal every single day that I try to reach. My goal is between 120 and 165 grams of protein every single day. That is a goal that I try to reach. So you're going to see that the foods that I'm also choosing, not only are they 
a little less point heavy, but they are packed full of protein, which if you didn't know, is one of the things in Smart Points that saves us in Smart Points. So if our food is heavily filled with protein, it generally knocks down the Smart Points. So those choices of high protein foods will help with your points as well. So for a protein shake, I decided to use a scoop of my Primal Kitchen Collagen Fuel Peanut Butter, which I love. It is two points for that. I will be linking everything down below that I tell you guys about here, the fuel and my protein powder. I threw in a frozen banana for zero. I do not count blended fruit, so that is zero points for me. I put in a cup of unsweetened almond milk and a scoop of my Live Well Raw Cacao Protein Powder. I'll link that down below as well for you guys. So this protein shake is two for the peanut butter powder and one point, which is amazing. Live Well is amazing. It's only one point per serving. So that is a total of three smart points, which puts me at 21 out of 34 points for the day. And then for dinner, I decided to make a one skillet pasta. This recipe was in my What I Eat in a Day that was posted just the other day. I'll link that video down below for you guys. And that website is actually, or that recipe is actually over on my website. The recipe is so good. You guys definitely need to check it out. Watch the video. It was such a fun day. And the recipe is part of that video. And it is also over on my website. So I had one serving of that one skillet pasta, which was six smart points and 359 calories. I also topped it with one tablespoon of grated Parmesan cheese for one point and 20 calories. So this put me up to 29 out of 34 smart points. And then for dessert today, I decided to have a chocolate cookie dough, frozen Greek yogurt bar. This was a Yasso bar. This is another example of a processed item. This is only 100 calories, but is five smart points. So this is another example of something that is not calorie dense, but is heavy in smart points, but they're really good and they have five grams of protein because they are a Greek yogurt bar. So with the Yasso bar, that put me right at 34 out of 34 smart points and right at my caloric goal, actually under by 22 calories. I ate 1,838 calories that day. My goal is about 1860 to 1893. This is a prime day. I also showed another day in my video that I did the shocking truth about points versus calories. I gave you another example of a perfect point in calorie day where I stayed within my points and within my calories. So this day was absolute perfection. I was actually under my calories a little bit. I was right at 34 out of 34 smart points. So basically I nailed it. I chose a lot of zero point foods. You notice that I had a lot of fruit. I had fruit in my smoothie, fruit with breakfast, fruit with lunch. I also chose eggs as part of my breakfast, which are zero smart points. And I chose a lot of protein dense foods, foods with a lot of protein, which makes them less smart points. And this day, the foods that I chose was a pretty good balance. I had some processed things like the hamburger bun and the Yasso bar. And then I had some real good whole food, like the sweet potato toast and some fruit and a protein shake and had a really good dinner with some ground turkey. So it's all about balance and food choices. So my top tips for you, if you are concerned about making sure that you're eating enough calories on WW, I have some tips for you that I think are pretty foolproof ways for you to do just that. Tip number one is double track. Even if you don't double track every single day, at least once a week, every couple weeks, a few days of the week while you're getting started, double track. Make sure that you are within your calories and your points. If you choose to be heavily focused on calories like I am, maybe track that first in the app of your choice. Lose It is great. My Fitness Pal is great. I track Bites has a calorie counting program. If you are heavily geared towards your points, track it first in the WW app. Maybe Make sure you're within your points there and then double track it in your calorie app of your choice to make sure you're within your caloric range. I think that knowledge is power and knowing whether or not you're within your points and your calories kind of gives you a map of what foods you can continue to eat and add to your day to make sure that you're reaching both your calories and your smart points. So that is my tip number one and it's number one because I think it's really, really important to know where you're falling. Tip number two is focus on the zero point foods. Although these foods have zero points, they don't have zero calories. However, the foods that WW put on this list are there for a reason. They are healthy foods. They are real whole food. They are lean proteins. They are not sugar dense foods. So they're on that list for you to enjoy. 
form your meals around the zero point foods. Pick one or two of those and make all of your meals and snacks around that. And that way you're getting in those calories from those zero point foods, but they're zero points. So they're not putting a big penalty on your points for the day. Number three is focus on real food. Like I mentioned, there are some real foods that are high in points and low in calories, but the majority of the whole real unprocessed foods out there are going to help fill your belly with nutrients, keep you full, keep you satisfied, help with your weight loss and your energy to do your workouts and just make it through your day in general. You definitely feel a lot more satiated with real food than with processed or packaged food. So if you're heavily focused on real food with a very minor focus on packaged food, like I mentioned, I had a hamburger bun and a yasso bar both that day, which are prepackaged processed foods and I still was able to maintain my calories and my points because the majority of my food that day was real whole food. And I think that this is really, really important. Now, can you stay within your points with a lot of processed food? Absolutely. But I challenge you, if you are someone that eats a lot of processed foods, double track for a few days and see where you fall caloric wise, because I can bet you that you're going to be way under calories and right at your smart points. And I can say this because literally dozens upon dozens of you, hundreds of you have reached out to me and said just that, that you are always within your smart points, but you are way under your calories because of the foods that you're choosing. They're more processed, they're more packaged. And tip number four is do what works for you. It is so important to not do something just because someone else does it. Your favorite influencer, your best friend, your mom, your dad, your sister, do what works for you. If eating packaged foods works for you and you feel like you're getting in enough calories, then more power to you. Continue to do that. And don't let anyone tell you that that isn't the right way to work WW. There is no wrong way or right way to work the program. It is open for us. It's open for our interpretation. We can work the program however works for us. I think that knowledge is power though. And I think that by knowing that you're eating enough calories is really, really important for you. I've also had a lot of people reach out to me and say, well, I've lost all this weight on WW, even though I'm eating under a thousand calories. Well, of course you have, of course you're going to lose weight because you're at such a severe calorie deficit. But in the process of losing that weight, you are damaging your metabolism. You are creating an issue for yourself down the road. When you get to your goal weight, what's going to happen when you eat a little bit more food, chances are you're going to gain weight. And a lot of people that follow really any program, whether it's WW or keto or South Beach or whatever they are out there, gain their weight back because when they lose their weight, they eat more and their damaged metabolism has a hard time keeping up with those extra calories. But if you take it slow and steady, wins the race throughout your weight loss journey and you eat at a good caloric level, you should see the weight come off. It may be a little bit slower, but slow weight loss stays off, but you will eventually reach your goal. And when you do, you're not going to see the struggle of adding back in calories and weight gain because you've already been eating a good amount of calories for your body throughout your entire weight loss. I highly recommend that you check out Jordan Syatt. He has a very simple, equation to figure out your calories and your protein and your macros if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to link his channel down below for you as well. He has been a huge, huge inspiration for me. I even had the pleasure of talking with him on the phone. We've texted a few times. He's an amazing, amazing person. And he has a very, very good philosophy on losing fat fat loss and doing it in a healthy, sustainable way. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope that it brought to light that you can actually eat enough calories on WW if you work the program really in the way that the program was intended to be worked. And that is focus around those zero point foods. Everything that we talked about is going to be linked down below as well as Jordan's channel and the playlist for all of my other points versus calories video. Check them out. A lot of you reached out to me and said that literally your mind was blown when you saw these videos and you took a hard look at your program and made some changes. And there are so many of you that are kicking some major, you know what, since transitioning over to more calorie focus and matching those up with your smart points. So in the comments, let me know if you guys have any questions, if there's any other videos in this points versus calories that you want to see. I did do a poll on my Instagram and also in my Facebook group where I said, ask me your questions on points versus calories. So that video where I answer all of those is coming out soon as well. But any video ideas on this topic, leave those down below for me. Again, if you're new, I'd love it if you'd stick around and join me. Just hit the little subscribe button and the bell next to it. So you're notified when new videos are 
they're uploaded. If you are not subscribed, but you watch my videos all the time, it really helps my channel out if you end up subscribing. And that way you can be notified too with the bell when new videos are uploaded. I would appreciate it. And of course, if this video hit home for you and you loved it, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And of course, it means a lot to me. And don't forget to check out that description box down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.